Hello, uh, my name is Josie Long. I'm a stand-up comedian. I do radio things. I'm a writer and I'm a broadcaster. So the reason I wanted to make a costume that was a cape of books and that was a homemade cape of books and the reason that I wanted my um, superhero to be fairly low-key and fairly natural is I wanted to represent the idea that um, I wanted to represent scruffy bookish women who like to self-educate and the power that exists in knowing who you are and being that and not giving a damn about other people's opinions of what that might mean. And so uh, when it comes to the books uh, that we put onto the cape, I wanted to have female authors as well. I wanted to represent people having their own individual voice and being strong enough in their own shoes to broadcast <laughs> that. But strong enough in yourself to kind of have your own voice. And so that for me is what it represents. It represents um, telling your story in your own way and that way is allowed to be as ramshackle and scruffy as, as you want and it doesn't make you less powerful. Um, this is a t-shirt I was given which is a reference to the Neapolitan novels, the very sad shoe factory, of course. You'll all know it. Um, what really grabbed me about the Neapolitan novels, I think, was the sheer mastery of the writing. They managed to achieve so much and speak so thoroughly about female experience in this way that I'd not really identified with before. On top of that, they're like Dickensian in scope and wonderfully like easy to read. Like I've never read things that felt more deeply nourishing and literary and smart, but at the same time you're like, oh my God, what's he gonna do next? Oh, he's such an asshole. And like, um, also it's just such a wonderful uh, portrait of the complex friendship you have with someone over 50 years of your life and, and of really closely relating to another person as a friend. It, I thought it was marvelous like that. Like it understands people and it writes about them in a way that is both really page turnery and really high end. So I really liked it. Wait, Wait, that? You should start with Slaughterhouse Five. It's like when people go like, I think they're scared to start with the obvious one. But Slaughterhouse Five is such a great introduction to Kurt Vonnegut. Um, and it's just a real banger of a book. Like it, it's such a tight piece of writing and it's so affecting and funny in places and brilliantly written and a really good example of what he's like. So I would always say start with Slaughterhouse Five. I'm quite controversial as far as I don't like Breakfast of Champions. It's like my only one of his that I don't really get on with. Um, a lot of people start with Breakfast of Champions. That's initially what I tried to read when I was 18 and was like, oh, I don't like this. So Slaughterhouse Five, I would say, even though it's like, oh, what's your favorite crisps? Ready sorted, sure. It's, it seems like the route one option sort of has five then I would say um, anything else is great like Cat's Cradle, Galapagos, Timequake, um, Hocus Pocus, uh, the short stories are really fun you just can't go wrong with them apart from Breakfast of Champions which I do not think is his best. What I loved about The Secret River is I found the evocation I don't really read historical novels very much it's not something I've I suppose I've read, uh, a friend of mine got me a couple of like the, um, the David Mitchell ones that sort of do expansive different historical things, but I don't read that often, that kind of thing. I mainly read things about people being sad in 1950s America. Um, so it was, it was exciting to me to read a historical novel, but not just that, it managed to be so uh, evocative and so political, I felt like she really, really made you aware of the crushing nature of poverty and how uh, thin your chances were, and thin and few your chances were against kind of the brutality of it and stuff like that. And I, I was just amazed at how wonderfully that was written. And as well, just in terms of a descriptive novel that created a world, I thought it did it in such an accomplished way. It was wonderful. Like it really, I, I just, I loved reading it. I got, 
I find like there is always this tension because you want to read things that are literary novels that will tell you things about life. And so sometimes that makes you feel like guilty when you're really, really enjoying something because it's telling you a really lively descriptive story. But I thought that it managed to do that and still felt like a really moving and important thing that talked about really big political issues like colonisation and racism and uh, poverty and all these things that are like, and it kind of managed to talk about these things with, with the depth that they need, but also be really interesting and talk about like food they made, you know, which I really like.